I think my dad claims the title as like first, second, and third biggest fan. <laughs> He's the loudest guy around. If people were hanging out on the race course at kilometer 6, 18, or 41, they probably heard him. Or even at the finish line, like Sammy Jabril calls my dad Trevor because he like just screamed it out a good like 12, 13 times at the award ceremony. He's, yeah, he's a big fan. Yeah, one thing that really stuck to me ever since I was young in junior high, uh, when I would get on the start line for those cross country races, he would always tell me, okay, go out there conservatively over the first half and then clip away on the back half and pass as many people as you can, but just don't get passed. Um, so that kind of stuck with me all the way until now. I just really, focus on not getting passed on the back half of race and trying to be strong towards the back half of race too. So also from basketball as well, he helped me uh, learn the sport a little bit more. He taught me how to shoot. We had a basketball hoop in the cul-de-sac in Vancouver and we would play out there all the time. Um, he also taught me how to golf. So a lot of my athletic capability is a result of him teaching me over the years. It helps benefit my training by golfing at certain points in the year because it just Gives me a clear mind, resets everything. You get a little bit of a core workout in too, you're like you're always rotating around. Only the one side, so you have to learn how to hit left sided as well. But. Most of my life I've played basketball. Since the age of two, we had one of those six foot tall little tyke basketball hoops in the basement. So I'd always play on that. And then once I grew and turned out to be like five feet, it was pretty easy to dunk on that thing. So I kind of moved on. But uh, when I was younger, I was a part of the Junior Grizzlies basketball club out of Vancouver. That's when we had the Vancouver Grizzlies around. So we'd go over to the, uh, go to the games and we'd perform at halftime and just scrimmage around. So that was really unique. And I remember some of those times. It was really cool. We, uh, we were playing and then uh, the Toronto Raptors were playing the Grizzlies and the Raptors came out of the locker room and T-Mac was on the team and same with Vince, Vince Carter. And Vince Carter to me was like, he was a god. He was my favorite player, so I got a high five from him, and yeah, <laughs> I got a high five from him. Yeah, because he was coming out, and we were all just wanting high fives. So it's like that was the one thing that I remember, and it was really cool. So yeah, I, <laughs> I just take a very humble and modest approach to the sport. So at times when you're presented a medal and they put the medal around your neck. I don't like wearing it just because I want to stay a little bit more low key and like I have bigger goals than where I'm at in the moment. And once I achieve those bigger goals, like, yeah, I'll, I'll wear that medal because that's what I want. Um, but just for the sake of wearing a medal, I don't want to show it off. I don't want to like be highlighted as like some top tier dude. I just want to be me and that's just how I am. It was ever since like basketball days is why well. I just never wore the medal. So. A big influencer in my life is Jeremy Deer. He was, he still is competitive. He can still run a 109 half marathon if he wants to. Um, but he was really, really talented when he was younger on the track. And um, he mentored me as just a, a person in general. I feel like my, uh, my modesty comes from him and at times when I'm just really humble, it's because of him. He kind of showed me the way through examples. So he's one guy that I really look up to. Oh, <laughs> it might have been dumb of me, but I just feel like it was very bold and I feel like it was warranted when I first started like doing half marathons. I just, I don't know, I really appreciated it. I just loved it. And I progressed pretty quickly. Like over the span of a year, I clipped six minutes off my half marathon and then from that point, six months later, I clipped another four minutes off. So over the span of 18 months, I went from being a 119 half marathoner to a 109 half marathoner. I'm like, wow, I made this huge leap forward. I'm gonna shoot for the Olympics. <laughs> Cause why not? Like if you really have your mindset on something, why don't you aim for the highest standard possible? So that's why I moved out here, is to make that Olympic team. And I'm just willing to put in everything that I have, physically, mentally, and financially, to do that. Um, if it happens, great, but if not, then I give it a shot. And I feel like if you live life properly, you're gonna be following your passion and you're gonna try and go for what you believe in.